Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you know who I am, I am the one and only. Nice to meet you. Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about how to be the best Amazon delivery driver according to the Amazon scorecard. So stick around, you might learn some things that you never knew before, even though you've been an Amazon delivery driver for who knows how long. But stick around guys, let's see what we can find out. So if there's anything new that can help you out, make you make a better score, make you, make you a better driver, whatever wow. it is. So let's get straight into it. So basically what the Amazon scorecard is, how Amazon rates your DSP, how well they're doing, how well their drivers are doing. And the better the drivers do, the more they get compensated. They can get poor, they can get fair, they can get good. They can get fantastic and fantastic plus. What DSPs are always shooting for is always fantastic and fantastic plus. If they did good, it's kind of like breaking even. So you always want to make sure that your DSP hits fantastic, fantastic plus. And it's always going to be up to uh, the drivers and how well they do. So we're going to try to break this down for you. We're not going to worry about all the DSP stuff. We're just going to worry about what Amazon scores the drivers. That way you can get an idea of how to be the best driver you can be. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a I'm just a big, hairy American winning machine. If you ain't first, you're last. The first one on the list is going to be the FICO score. Of course, we all know what FICO scores if you're an Amazon delivery driver, but a FICO score is basically Kind of, if you ever had insurance, you put a beacon in your car and then it detects how you drive. If you're uh, driving crazy or using your phone while you're driving, things like that. That's what the Amazon FICO score is. Excuse me. What happened? What happened? What's going on? I'll tell you what happened. Your 850? Nah. 720. Wait, what? Harsh. Breaking. Use an app called Mentor, which in my opinion is not the best app in the world. It's kind of terrible in my opinion, of course. Let me know what you think about <laughs> about Mentor. But yes, it detects how you drive. It can detect if you're using your phone while you're driving. It can detect if you're har uh, braking too harshly, accelerating too fast, and all that stuff. If you need better score or, or need help with your uh, FICO score, I'll put the link down in the description of a video. This is part of your uh, scorecard and you need to have it a nice high percentage uh, to be considered a good driver. So always having it around 815 to 850 would probably be the best. Uh, heaven in the 700s is kind of not the best in my opinion, but yes. FICO score does play into your uh, your Amazon scorecard and you wanna keep this number nice and high, okay? The second thing we're gonna be talking about will be CPO off rate. So guys, you always, always, always want to have your seatbelt on when you're delivering. It doesn't matter if your delivery is five steps away from you. If you decide to get in that van and you turn on that vehicle and you're gonna roll those wheels, make sure to always put on your seatbelt. A lot of people don't wear a seatbelt and it keeps them from having a good score on the scorecard and it does bring your Amazon's uh, DSP score down. So if you're gonna be a good driver, guys, always put your seatbelt on with the nitrate uh nitrate it's the cameras on the on the vehicle they want to see that you have your seatbelt across your chest okay not behind you or buckled behind you or if you put it on put it underneath your arm don't do that okay make sure you have it across your chest and it's visible because if you put it somewhere else it's gonna say you don't have your seatbelt on so always keep your seatbelt on on top of your chest so the camera can see that you actually have it okay don't put don't put it on across your chest and then put your vest on top or a sweater on top of that don't do that because it's gonna say you don't have a seatbelt on always make sure you wear that seatbelt it's just a safe thing to do in my opinion and then it's what the camera wants so Please make sure to wear your seatbelt across your chest and then it's visible to the camera or else it's gonna count against you. The third thing we're gonna talk about is speeding event rates. According to Amazon, the speeding event rate metric is average of speeding instances occurred by a DA, DA meeting a delivery associate per route. A speeding instance is speeding 10 miles per hour or more over the posted speed limit, roughly one city block. So if you're so going 40 and then you're supposed to be going 30. If you go 40 
past a city block or a city block length means you're gonna get hit with that speeding event so guys most people I know when you're driving or when I'm driving or somebody else is driving or when you're driving I know you do it too when you're driving you you're going let's say you're going 45 miles per hour right you start seeing 70 miles per hour you see the speed limit coming up you start speeding before you pass that speed limit sign you start going 60 70 70 whatever Okay, you can't do this in the Amazon vans, okay? What you need to do in the Amazon van is if the speed limit sign says 70, do not go 70 until you pass that speed limit sign. If you do it before that speed limit sign, it's going to hit you, all right? It's going to say you're speeding. So the fourth thing we're going to talk about is distraction rate according to the scorecard. The distraction rate metric measures your team's performance on distracted driving. Nitrodyne, or Nitrodyne, it's called nitrate. Nitrodyne captures three types of distraction based on the video evidence, including when a DA is looking down, looking at their phone, or talking on their phone while driving. Each time a DA is driving while distracted, Nitrodyne will register one event. So guys, just try not to be distracted when you're driving. If you look away too long, like if you're driving right and you're looking for an address, if you're looking for the address, make sure you look forward a couple times because if you're looking away too long, it's going to say you're distracted driving. If you look down, it might say you're instantly distracted. So try to avoid looking down if you can. Don't text and use your phone while driving, okay? Don't do that because it will detect it or will mark it as distracted driving. And you are pretty much distracted, guys. So be very careful. So don't use your rabbit in front of your face. If you need to uh, use your rabbit, make sure it stays underneath the camera so it doesn't see it and it's on somewhere where it's easy, easily viewed, right? Because if you bring it to your face and the camera sees that you're using your rabbit, trying to look at it, whatever, it's gonna count it as distracted driving, all right? Don't text and drive. Don't talk on the phone and drive. If your dispatch calls you and you need to talk to them or whatever it is, make sure you pull over, park that van, and then call them back or then, or if you need to talk to them, pull over, park that van, then call them, okay? Because if you use it while you're driving, it's gonna count against you, okay? We're trying to make you the best delivery driver out there so Amazon can be saying that it's your fault for something you didn't do, all right? Cool. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is following distance rate. The following distance rate measures how DSPs are performing in terms of leaving enough following distance from the vehicle in front. Nitrodyne will create a following distance event if a DA has a 0.6 second or less following distance from the vehicle in front. So basically guys, this is pretty easy. Just make sure you leave like a van length or two van lengths in front. That way you're not too close to the other vehicle. If you're too close to the other vehicles, you're gonna hear the camera say uh, distance or something like that. It, it announces it. So it lets you know if you're too close to another vehicle, but make sure you put enough length between you and the vehicle in front of you because if you don't it's gonna hit you for that not saying that's gonna hit you if you're like if you're in a stop sign or something like that or a red light but if you're driving and you're like in the highway or in the even the service road if you're too close to another vehicle it's gonna hit you for that okay guys so just be careful and it's it's to keep you safe as well i don't want anything to happen to you guys i want you guys to be safe and i don't want you to get hurt so make sure you keep that distance because some people be breaking harshly <laughs> And when you have to brake harshly, all your package is going to come flying and then you're going to have to brake harshly and then you're going to get hit for harsh braking and all that. And then now it's like your FICO score went down. You just got hit for braking too harshly. All your packages are all messed up in the back. So just be careful, guys. Keep that distance between you and that vehicle in front of you. And if you haven't yet, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment so the algorithm shares my video with the world. And I can get to 100,000 subscribers so I can get a haircut. Jesus Christ, my hair is doing crazy. I don't know what to do with it. Look at this. What do I do with this? I have no clue, okay? But yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That would help me out. Hit that bell notification so when you, I release a new video, guys, you can watch it, okay? I promise you, I'm pretty cool. I, I think I'm pretty cool. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is sign and signal violations. The sign and signal violation rate measures how well a DA adheres to posted road signs and traffic signals. We're currently including stop sign violations, which is any time a DA drives past through a stop sign without coming to a full stop. Illegal U-turns, which means 
uh, measures anytime a DA makes a U-turn with a no U-turn sign is present and the and stoplight violations, which is triggered anytime a DA drives through an intersection while the light is red. So guys, make sure you follow the signs. For example, signal violation would be if you made an illegal U-turn where it says clearly no U-turn, right? The camera can pick that up. Now at stop signs, guys, a lot of people forget in the morning when they're taking off for the day, the stop signs at their parking lot also hits them, guys. So all the stop signs you guys hit at the Amazon hub, wherever you are, those hit you too. So always stop behind the stop sign. Most people like to stop also when they're on the road, like to stop when they can see incoming traffic, right? So we roll past the stop sign in our, in our own personal vehicles. At least I know I do. I roll past the stop sign and I see incoming traffic, right? And then I go. According to these cameras, you can't do that. You have to stop behind the stop sign, count to three, one, two, three, and then you can roll forward and see oncoming traffic, okay? If you're, even if you slow roll it, and then you're like really slow, it's gonna still count you as violating that stop sign. You passed it, you skipped it, you didn't stop at the stop sign, okay? So always stop behind the stop sign, make sure the camera can see it, count to three, and then roll forward, and then you can see oncoming traffic, okay? Also, do not try to pass, or do not try to beat yellow lights, guys. If you try to beat that yellow light and it turns red in the middle of the intersection, I don't know why, but it's gonna hit you for passing this a uh, red light so just don't try to beat the yellow light guys i know sometimes you're like oh i can make it but if it turns yellow just slow down guys come to a complete stop and your score is gonna stay nice and high okay be safe be careful and yeah don't don't try to beat the yellow light because it's gonna hit you for it. it's kind of dumb no no illegal u-turns yield when you have to yield do all everything you have to do okay all right guys the next thing we're going to talk about is dcr which is a delivery completion rate so what a delivery completion rate according to Amazon is, is the share of packages dispatched to DA or a DSP, which is delivered to the customer and not returned to the station. So making sure you deliver all your packages and not returning anything back. So basically what that means is just deliver all your packages, guys. Try not to bring anything back. The less you bring, the better it is for your DSP and the better it looks on you. Okay, that's all it means. The next thing we're gonna talk about is DAR, guys. A DAR measures the delivered, not received DNR uh, rate that is adjusted for crime based on your specific delivery area for the week. The metric is a scale from a score of zero, worst to 100 best DSP and DAs who will earn fantastic for DAR typically achieve a DER of 70 or higher. Basically, that means is is your package getting stolen? Is your package not getting stolen? Make sure you hide your packages, guys. Put it somewhere behind uh, where if you're delivering to where there's a street along that house or whatever it is, make sure you hide it somewhere, okay? Camera recording. I was just joking. If it's an apartment, make sure you put it in the locker. If, if it's a sketchy apartment, it sucks. It might mess up your delivery rate. But if it's a sketchy apartment and you feel like it's gonna get stolen, it's perfectly fine to bring the package back. It's better to bring the package back to the station rather than it get stolen, okay? That way it doesn't count against you. I'm not sure why this counts against the delivery drivers because once you drop it off, I mean, it should no longer be in your hands. It's like there where it was supposed to be, right? But yes, if the package gets stolen, it counts against the delivery drivers. So if you're gonna deliver something, guys, make sure it's nice and hidden somewhere out of view so it doesn't get stolen by porch pirates okay awesome all right guys the next thing we're going to talk about is uh swc pod which is the photo on delivery uh, basically pod compliance is based on the number of usable pods example percentable to the customer taken divided by total pod opportunities basically just make your uh picture clean make sure it's clear you know guys you guys know that little box inside when you're taking the picture on the rabbit there's like a little box make sure the box that you're delivering is within that little box okay make sure it's clear make sure it's not blurry make sure your shadow's not in on it so sometimes i'd have to do this just to take the picture 
because the sun was behind me and I had to make sure my shadow was in it, make, was not in it. Make sure your foot's not in it. Make sure your face is not in it. Some people do have screen doors that are reflective. Make sure your reflection's not in it. Make sure the customer's face is not in it. Make sure a dog's not in it. Just make sure it's just the package and nothing else. Yes, they are very picky about the pictures. Not sure why they're so picky. Even the shadow can be in it, but they don't want that in it. So make sure the picture is clear. It's, uh, it shows where the box is. Make sure that your delivery box that you're delivering, that the white square that the rabbit has when you're delivering the Flex app, make sure the box is in that square, okay? To make it good. Uh, your foot, shadow, no, nobody's face, nobody's nothing. Make sure it's a clear picture of the box and that's it. Um, make sure there's enough room for the customer can, so the customer can tell, hey, that's my porch and that's it nice clear picture and you'll be good okay don't make any blurry pictures nothing nothing extra on it just a box that's it guys okay gotta get it good <laughs> next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the scan compliance scan compliance is measured by the share of packages which were marked from the amazon delivery app example not marked remotely from the station divided by the total amount of deliveries dispatched to the da so basically what that means is you ha don't scan the packages at the van, guys. I know a lot of people scan their packages at the van. I've been guilty of doing this. Make sure you scan the package where, where you're going to deliver it at. So if it's going to be delivered at the front door, front porch, make sure you scan the package at that front door, front porch, okay? Not in the van. That's basically what it means. Scan compliance, scan it where you're supposed to scan it, like they taught you during the training, at the front door and not in the van. And that's going to help you uh, raise those percentages up or make you a better Amazon delivery driver, okay? That's all it means, guys. Making it super simple for you guys. That way it's not confusing or anything like that. Hope this helps. Hope you guys are not getting confused. If you are getting confused, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to explain a little bit more. But I'm trying to make it so the way I would understand it because I'm pretty dumb. So if I can understand it, I'm sure you guys can understand it because you guys are all smarter than me, 100%, I promise. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is contact compliance, SWCC. Basically what that means is, let me give you the definition Amazon gives us, the share of deliveries where the driver attempts to call or text the customer through the Amazon delivery app divided by the count of deliveries where the driver experiences unable to access UTA, unable to locate UTL or no secure location NSL issues. So basically guys, it's you calling the customer or texting the customer when you need to. So always, we always tell our drivers, call the customer, text the customer and call them one more time. Call, text, call each and every single time, okay? So that way you are in contact compliance with what you need to be doing. You need to always attempt, if you're not gonna be able to like, let's say get into the gate, you don't have the magic password and the customer didn't give it to you, they gave you like 100 passwords but none of them work, call the customer, call, text, call. Call them once, then text them, hey, it's Amazon, uh, I don't know the magic password to this gate, what is it? Wait for them to respond, give them about a minute. If they don't respond, give them another call. Once you call them again, go ahead and move on to the next, okay guys? And you always have to attempt a delivery twice. So if you went to the location one time and you call, text, call, they didn't answer, they didn't give you the magic password, whatever, go on to your next deliveries, come back later again, give them call, text, call again. If you try it at least twice, then you can bring the package back Back at the end of the night but always let your dispatcher know what's going on okay that way you don't get in trouble at the end of the day all right guys cool got it get it good now you guys are gonna be the best amazon delivery drivers in the world and there's gonna be no reason for you to get let go because you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing because you know why because one said so and if you get let go you can be like hey what's going on well, the one and only said to do this and I got fired. Well, dang, he's dumb. <laughs> and I think that's it, guys. The SWCAD is not really anything. Uh, so you're good. That's it. I uh, hope you guys learned some new things. If you didn't learn anything new, let me know. If I'm wrong on anything, let me know. Put it down in the comments below. I am only human, of course. And of course, you guys are 100 times smarter than me. I'm not the brightest person in the world. I'm just trying to make it simple for you guys uh, to understand how to become a better delivery driver. And I really hope this helped 
at least one person out there okay so i hope this helps you with throughout your day helps you become a better delivery driver and now you know what to do so when they try to get you in trouble and like no i did what i'm supposed to do because i know what i'm supposed to do Juan only told me to, okay? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet, hit the like button, put um, put some comments down below so the algorithm can spread up my video out to the world and I can get 100,000 subscribers because that's what we're aiming for, baby. All right, we try and get 100,000 subscribers because I need to cut my hair pretty soon. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. If you wanna watch any other Amazon videos or comedy skits or anything about me, go ahead and watch these videos. They're gonna help you out. I love y'all. I love you, baby. Please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs>